Well, today marks what I hope is the start of a whole new health chapter for me because I've taken 12.5 milligrams, that's MG, of iodine. I took it this morning in tablet form and I'm hoping it's going to help me improve, maybe even cure my hypothyroidism. 12.5 mg is a very high dose of iodine and many conventional doctors, most conventional doctors would say it's far too much. The conventional thinking is that 150 micrograms, that's mcg, is the ideal daily dose of iodine and most people accept that we get this in our normal course of the day, you know, we get this in our food. But there are many problems because iodine can be deplete, depleted by other chemicals such as bromine. And it's it seems that many people are deficient in it. I think tests have shown that people have 50% less iodine today than they used to have. I'm not 100% sure why this is, but there's a lot of different thoughts about it. So I'm going to try and just try this out. It's not something that people should take lightly. I think it's a very, very serious thing, very important to get this kind of thing right because I've been told that there are side effects of taking high doses of iodine and I didn't expect those side, side effects to kick in immediately. I was really surprised that they did kick in today and I think conventional doctors would probably say that it's not side effects. It's the fact that you're taking too much. I know I've spoken to many people before I started actually doing this. And the thinking seemed to be that the conventional thought is that if you take even just a slight amount above the suggested dose, then you can push yourself, you, you can actually increase the hypothyroidism instead of improving it but you need to get the dose exactly right and it's really a small dose you know there was there's been a lot of recent medical research by certain doctors to show that this actually might not be the case and they believe that high doses of iodine more than 50 mg a day maybe up to 150 mg a day in certain circumstances could be beneficial. So those doctors are mentioned in this book, which is called The Iodine Crisis by Lynn Farrow. It's an excellent book. Lynn, at the end of it, she, she discusses the iodine supplementation protocol, which was announced at the October 2007 iodine conference by the physicians Guy Abraham MD, David Brownstein MD, and Jorge Flechas or Flechas MD. Apparently, they've tra treated thousands of patients with iodine supplementation, but they don't say that you should just go and take any old iodine, you know, ram it down your throat and that's it. A, it's got to be the right kind of iodine, and B, it's got to be, you should take it along, along with it, you should take companion nutrients because these companion nutrients will help ease the side effects. And certainly from what I've, ha I've gone through today, I think that's the case. So the type of iodine that is recommended is either Lugol's solution, and that's not a brand name. Lugol was a chemist in Victorian times, I think the 19th century, who discovered this particular type of iodine. And it's just topically painted on. You can drink it as well in very, very, um, you've got to really get the dose right. The reason I didn't go for Lugol's is because apparently it can be irritable to the, the dig digestion. And the brand that's probably best known in among people who take high doses is Iodorol. That is um, an American brand and I had read that there's an alternative brand that's easier to get in the UK. Apparently you can get Iodrol in the UK, but I ordered this, this brand last week. So this is the one I took, it's Iod RX, Iodo RX, I don't know how you're meant to pronounce that. 
it's it seems to have exactly the same formula it's as the iodorol it's 7.5 milligrams mg uh, of it is potassium iodide in each tablet and 5 mg comes from iodine so you've got potassium iodide and iodine together and i understand i might have this wrong i'm not an expert but i understand that the potassium iodide iodide is important to help your body absorb the iodine so the dose each each tablet has 12.5 mg and apparently the recommended way of taking this is to take one tablet a day for a week then take two tablets the next week ten two tablets each day the next week and you build up to what up to 50 mg a day which is four tablets so i'm just going to see how it goes these tablets are brown and speckled it was quite easy to take actually it's not too large there you can just see that and I took this first thing in the morning because I'd been told that if you take a large dose of iodine in the evening, it can disturb your, your sleep. The companion nutrients, which I actually didn't take until later in the day because I really didn't think there'd be a strong effect initially from this. Companion nutrients are vitamin C, 3000 mg a day, 300 to 600 mg of magnesium oxide, which I didn't take because I eat a lot of greens. So I think I probably get at least 3,000, sorry, 300 mg of magnesium oxide every day. 200 mcg of, that's micrograms of selenium, 500 milligrams mg of niacin, in other words, B3, twice a day. I haven't taken any of that yet. And you're advised to start lower on that one because it can lead to a hot flush. 100 mg micrograms of vitamin B2 three times a day and a half a teaspoon of unprocessed sea salt added to the diet and a quarter teaspoon of unprocessed salt in eight ounces of water twice a day. That's to flush out the toxins. Because the idea with this program is that, you, that you're probably iodine deficient because you've got a buildup of toxins, including maybe bromine, fluorine, other halogen, halogens. And you need to flush these out. That's what causes the side effects. And what happened with me today was that I took the tablet. I didn't really feel much difference. I think I noticed an increase in my pulse because I've been taking my pulse a lot because I think I've got hyperthyroidism. And later on in the day, about 11.30, I started to feel a bit trembly, a bit wobbly. And about an hour later, I got a slight feeling of nausea. I ate my lunch, but I like green smoothies, so I always have two green smoothies. They were fine. I really, I loved drinking the green smoothies, but I didn't want any solid food. I just wanted liquids. So I had a cup of peppermint tea. I just felt a little bit queasy, not, not overly queasy. In fact, about two o'clock, I had a little bite to eat, just a, a few nuts. I felt tired, actually. Usually I don't feel sleepy tired during the day but I did feel a bit tired today. And at about five o'clock, I decided to go and buy the vitamins that were recommended as the companion nutrients, because I thought that might help. Just before I did that, I did the salt loading pro protocol. So I had a quarter teaspoon of salt dissolved in water. Just ordinary salt, in fact. I read it, I misread it, I, I made, made a mistake. Should have been sea salt. But it immediately did make me feel better, actually. Maybe it just helped settle my stomach. And after that, I had some water because the idea with the salt loading pro protocol is that you want to flush out the toxins. So once you've got the salt into your system, you need to then drink a lot of water. And then I took 
vitamin B2. I didn't take the niacin. I didn't take the B3 because I didn't want to have possible flushes. I thought it was quite a lot to take in the evening. And I also took about a thousand mg of vitamin C. And since that, since doing all that, I felt much, much better. So it's interesting. That's my first day anyway. So I'm going to see how this goes. What I've what I'm interested in in this book, it's full of personal case histories from people who have been doing this iodine proto protocol. And I think all of them are incredibly positive. It seems to have helped people with all kinds of symptoms, particularly hypothyroidism um, and breast conditions, fibros fibrocystic, fibrocystic breast, breast disease. All kinds of conditions seem to have been relieved. Psoriasis, eczema, even hearing. Hearing loss was improved, apparently, according to these case histories. But one thing occurred to me, and that is, if someone had a bad experience with this, would they be in this book? I just don't know. Would someone have actually written? Because some of them were taken from various websites. I just wonder whether there are bad experiences that haven't been reported. I know that there are side effects that people, you know, people have really suffered with side effects. I know that. But most of them in this book persevere to the end. So I'm going to try it anyway for myself. And I will report back on my progress as I go on.